first step is to warm the milk over medium heat. While the milk's warming, combine the rest of the ingredients in a bowl. The next step is to pour half of the warmed milk into the egg mixture. You're going to add back the egg mixture to the pot. Now you're going to cook the mixture until it reaches 175 degrees or until it coats the back of a spoon. Sometime during this process, uh, either adding the hot milk to the eggs or adding it all back in here, you might get a little piece here and there of egg that cooks, like scrambled eggs. It won't hurt anything. If it bothers you, all you need to do is strain it out. But most of the time, I don't see any this time. Sometimes that happens, but most of the time it doesn't. If you're, That's the purpose of adding the, the heated milk to the eggs is to temper them so that when you do pour them into the hot pan, they, won't, they shouldn't scramble. But if they do, if you have a piece here and there, just strain them out and you'll still be good to go. So we've reached 175 on the thermometer, but in case you don't have a thermometer, you just want to cook it. You can see it's beginning to coat the spoon, the wooden spoon, and it, it, it's not going to get thick. It's just going to, but you can tell it's got some body to it. You can tell it's thicker than when you started. You can begin to feel that it's thicker to push around in the, in the pot, and it, and it does begin to coat the spoon, and that's when you know that it's ready. The last step is to let it chill before you drink it. So it's been a few days since I made the float. I actually forgot about it. So I'm going to pour some and see, see if you can see how wonderful, oh look how thick and wonderful it is. So rich, just like I said, almost like a milkshake. That's probably plenty. Very rich. Very rich and luxurious. Tastes a lot like a milkshake. So I first found out about float. I did not grow up eating float or drinking float or anything. I first found out about it in a cookbook that I had. And I read about it. It's Appalachian cookbook. And I thought, hmm, that sounds really interesting. And then the more I read, reading through the ingredients, I thought that sounds a whole lot like custard. It's basically what it is. It's custard. You probably already guessed that from the recipe that I that I shared. So people put it put custard, like I've made custard before to put on apple stack cakes, put on pound cake, different things like that. But apparently in parts of Appalachia they also would drink it. Another thing that's common or similar is eggnog. So if you're familiar with it making a homemade eggnog, it's very similar to that. So this was a uh, from the book, it's actually Mark Son's uh, book. 
So boiled custard is a cooked sauce to drink. Mountaineers call it float, and when cooked and cooled, the sauce is thick, rich, and sweet. The French call it English uh, custard or cream angelise, and they use it as a sauce as well as the base for floating islands. So that was what made me uh, try float several years back when I first gave it a try. So I, we have plenty of eggs these days because we have chickens at this time when I made that. Since then, we've always had plenty of eggs, so it's easy for me to make it because it takes four large eggs. Normally, I remember the days when I used to have to worry about how many eggs I had. That's the great thing about having chickens. You usually, if they're good layers, you have a supply of eggs. Anyway, uh, when I wrote about it on the blind pig and the acorn, I said, man, it is so good. It's so sweet. Uh, and I can see how it would be really good on cakes or different things. It, it basically tastes exactly like what I make to put on the apple stack cake. But it was interesting because several people were familiar with that term float. So here's a lady named Deborah. She says, yes, my mom made flo and it was wonderful. We ate it over ice. <laughs> Grandma Kate said, shucks, that's just good rich eggnog. And mom called it eggnog without the nog. So that was a funny one. And then another person saying, sounds like eggnog. And then someone named Mel said, we had flo every Christmas at, uh, and met at grandmother's in western Kentucky. It was thick and served cold. The adults would put a little flavoring in theirs, which was bourbon. What else would you put in it if you're from Kentucky, he says. So Yvette said, my granny from Kentucky made float every Christmas, and it was just this recipe. I am so happy to have found it. Since all, although I wrote down Granny's directions, they were not precise. This tastes just like Granny's, except that she used a little lemon extract in hers. So delicious. I've made the recipe you posted twice before and am making it again on Christmas. And everyone agrees that it tastes just like Granny's. She always put hers served cold over Sara Lee all butter pound cake. Thanks so much for posting the recipe. So they were drinking it and putting it on cake. Jim Baker said, float was something I looked forward to when visiting my grandmother in Southern Kentucky. Once each visit, we would have float, made as you describe it. I believe, seems it was a little thick and beige color. The farm is in a dry county, so my dad would bring some bourbon with us and a nip was added to the glass of float, but not for us kids, of course. Other comments talk about it being like boiled custard, which is what I said. That's what I the recipe is very similar to the one I make for apple stack cake. Also, a float, the only, and it was the same for me, the only float I ever really knew about was Granny would put ice cream in a glass and pour Coke over it, and that was a float, which is really common, of course, throughout the United States. So that's the only float I was familiar with, and that's what um, a lot of people commented. That was the float they, that they knew from childhood. So, but there was those few people who, yes, knew that float was, um, was uh, something, and it's funny how they connected it to Christmas, to a holiday. My husband's mother makes it every Christmas and calls it boiled custard. She sometimes serves it with fruit. Carol Eisler said, yes, Mama made that a lot down here. We just called it vanilla custard. It was the precursor to lots of delicious dishes, even churned ice cream. After my grandpa got home from a long stay in the hospital, he was kindly puny. She brought him back up, making him a gallon of this, enriched with extra eggs, and I took it to his house over in Greenville, South Carolina, every Sunday afternoon. He enjoyed a Dixie cup full every morning and evening the rest of his life. I haven't thought about this in a long time. I wonder if you can make something like this with stevia. Thanks. So that was an interesting one from Carol, where they used it actually to, to help her grandpa get back to health, help him gain some weight and get back on his feet. So that was interesting. Sydney Sailor Farr talks about it. She don't call it float, though, in her cookbook, More Than Moonshine. She calls it boiled custard, I believe. But she talks about her, it was a recipe from her husband's family. And what her husband, who was from Western North Carolina, what he always, um, it made him think of or remember, was that when his father would make it, he would take the, instead of cooling it in the refrigerator like I did, he would take it outside, take the pot outside, and sit it in the snow to cool it so that they could drink it that way. So float, if you've never had it before, is very good. Very sweet, rich drink. Very similar to a milkshake. And nice on a hot 
uh, July day like today is, you can sprinkle a little nutmeg in the top of it. I think that was what Mark Son said to do in his cookbook, and I've done that, but it's good plain. And it's really good over pound cake or fruit or any kind of cake, uh, like the apple stack cake that I was thinking of. Anything, any rich, uh, like apple-y something, it would be really good over that. So I hope you'll leave a comment and let me know. Have you ever heard of float? Are you like me and you thought that was when you poured Coke in on top of ice cream in a glass, that was a float? Or have you tasted this float that Mark Sohn wrote about and many of my readers on the Blind Pig and the Acorn had fond memories about? Let me know. And be sure to drop back by and we'll keep on celebrating Appalachia.